You are on set right now? Um, I'm in my Airbnb right now. Um, but I am in Vancouver still filming. Correct. Amazing. Because yes. what is so crazy about this production schedule it, is that it was so truncated by COVID. They were like, it was sort of yeah. like that Beckett quote, I can't go on. And they were like, I'll go on, you know, <laughs> like, they I, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, we, we were originally filming this back in March in New Mexico. Right. And, and then we, we, you know, pandemic happened. We got shut down a week, not even a week into being there. And what had you and, shot when, when you were there for a week? We shot one thing and it was my music video. Um, in, <laughs> uh, and literally 30 minutes later, we got shut down. And wow. uh, so that was my fault. I, I caused COVID. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we got shut down and I was on the first plane back to New York. It wow. was uh, crazy. And then production relocated to Vancouver. Do you see a difference between like how Canada is handling COVID and the U.S. is? I... I could laugh at how, <laughs> uh, honestly, it's embarrassing. I'm like, I'm proud to be an American, but I'm also like low-key embarrassed just with like how we've handled COVID and a lot of other stuff. But like I, the fact that I had to go to another country to be employed. I mean, there are actors working in the United States, but like, there are barely any cases in British Columbia compared to the States. Really? It's like, yeah, you know, you could, you know, we're not, we're, we're choosing not to, but like you could go to a restaurant here. Then like, I know there's places all over the United States that have indoor dining and stuff, but like, it's different. Can you it's, indoor dine in yeah. British Columbia? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know, I know recently the, with like spikes in cases, they've, they've cracked down on it a bit more, but it's like, you know, you could, like life is almost normal here. What is there to see in British Columbia? Just like mountains like, and yeah. trees. I know there's whales. I haven't done whale watching yet. Um, I saw a whale off the shore of this is jumping ahead a little bit, but plot twist. I'm from Long Island. We're the same age. We oh, are. fun. Cool. Oh, yeah. Throwback. Uh, um, I <laughs> yeah. heard you know Miles. Yeah, Miles Whitaker is, he was my like college roommate and um, is one of my best friends. We moved into the city uh together and we like we're like doing acting stuff for a little bit and then oh, as soon cool. as i booked a tour in march of 2020 <laughs> first like major booking of anything and honestly like i have, i'm sorry that that sucks but yeah. there will be more yeah exactly i mean look at yourself you could have found yourself in a situation where this was a huge thing that happened to you this tv show and then it could have just not gone forward. And by the grace of God, it did. And by the yeah, grace of God, I mean, like, let's, let's be real. I, I've said before, like, I feel like I won the lottery five times over with this job. And I mean that, you know, not only did I, 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 I booked a series regular, something I've been wanting to do since I started acting. Um, the, the pandemic hit and we were shut down. I went home unemployed after I like, quit my day job uh, to, to fly to New Mexico, went home unemployed and like everyone else had no income coming in. Um, and then there was another David E. Kelly show, Lincoln Lawyer on CBS. That was another straight to series show that got canceled. That got, they nixed it. And now it moved to Netflix, but it's like, I saw that happen and I was like, oh, there's no, there's a chance I won't have that dream job. What what is destroying me is like you are at this point in your life you're more on like the film TV side of the industry the and and making like incredible strides as like a, a queer person in that and there is so much beautiful stuff ha there was so many beautiful pieces of theater happening in New York City at the time and I was like in I was just in in the middle of of it all and seeing all of those stories just being put on hold was like incredibly upsetting but well now, what, what happened with your with your tour is that something that's like will they continue that when theater can start <laughs> again have they said 
Um, so I wouldn't, I don't think it's going to be something I can rely on for like a, a couple of years, maybe, uh, because, uh, it was a tour with the George street playhouse. And it was like a four person musical where we were going to theaters and we were going to schools as well. And, um, they, they paid me out, but like a week before, uh, Broadway shut down, they were like, yeah, so we're we're gonna give you what you deserve, and I'm so sorry this is happening to us, but like their funders were were backing out. They don't have they don't have a network. They're they're theater, yeah. uh, so all so they true. have are the organizations. So I, I look at it like I have something to look forward to. It'll be a nice surprise. It'll be a phone call like money, theater. Sure. sure sign me up <laughs> yeah exactly so i i'm curious like you since you're from long island tell me about growing up on long island from your end uh so i'm from manorville long island um you know emily her down she- yes <laughs> yes yes we, sam we went to purchase with her yeah it's she's cool. and tailored then if i sit she worked at the Moore store at, at purchase it's so funny i feel like I had a great experience in high school. You know, I was, I was in like a ton of clubs. I was like vice president of my class for a bunch of years. I did plays. I did like chorus. I did musicals or whatever. Like I had, and it was like the theater kids who were the cool kids in school. I blocked out Ooh. the, um, the bullying a fair amount because like we had this incredible arts program. Like I wouldn't say like it, it was necessarily, it didn't like prepare us for a career in the arts in any capacity, but it was a place to go to like not do drugs. <laughs> so that's real. Um, that was sort of something I had to deal with. I like have vague memories. I blocked out. I remembered like a couple of days ago. I was like, "Did I like beat a kid off with my tap shoe?" Oh my god! <laughs> that is something that I did. I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" And I just I I swatted a, my bully with a tap shoe. Um, I, I remember that. Um, it definitely was a time where I didn't, I, I was just was brought up also in like a lot of ignorance. Um, my, my, my town is, is very like the, the, I guess you would call it the, the Trumpian Long Island. That is sort of, I mean, you that's, been there that's a- Long Island. That's yeah. like all of Long Island from what I, from what I, that's a gross generalization, but like the same. And I think I was too, uh, I don't know, I was too in it to realize that. And it took me, like, I went to school in New York City, and when I came home, I was like, I was like, oh, so all of, oh, so when those parents said those mean things to me, it's because, oh, they hate me. Gotcha. Like, and they, couldn't it, e- they don't even want to begin to understand you. That's where, yeah. that's where it comes down to. These, these people who like, I, I was like, oh, I wish I could be more normal. That's, I would say that shit to myself a lot as a teenager. And like, I, when I think about that, I'm like, it's because there was, there was no other. I think um, maybe, and that's just my specific experience. There were a lot of great things and, and, and privileges about Long Island and like my exposure to the arts is because of the school that I, I went to. So, so I'm grateful for that. It was just a public school, but like, I think Same. how you're exposed uh, to people. And I see it right now at the gym when I, when I do go to the gym for like my semblance of normalcy, uh, when it's like, like at low capacity, I see the people who wear their mask right under. And those are the people I went to high school with. <laughs> I see them right away. It's very clear to yeah, me. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I love the beach. I love, there are many parts of Long Island that I am grateful for. I'm grateful for, you know, being able to go to school in a major entertainment hub like New York City and still having like a proximity to home was so helpful. Um, but you know, like I, here I am on top of the world being like my little queer self in like 11th grade, 12th grade, whatever. Um, and not having a real understanding of gender and sexuality and just understanding like, oh, I think differently than you guys to like me getting uh, essentially a death threat in the mail. It's like, you know, addressed to my parents and it's like, okay, so when something as traumatic as that 
happen so unexpectedly in a place where you felt safe? Like, how do you, how do you rebound from that? And I think honestly, that's why like Pete, when people say, when, when I hear names of like people I went to high school with, I honestly feel like I've blocked a lot of it out purely yeah. being like, I did not realize the tiny little bits of trauma I had all along the way. And I'm lucky that, you know, I never got beat up. I never got into a fight. No one ever gave me a hard time. But then I got like a letter saying people were going to do it. And it's like, okay, Ooh. like, all right. But you know, it's, I don't know. That's my tangent about Long Island. Oh, love for you. Sure. Love you, but I don't need to live there anymore. <laughs> exactly. And I'm, I'm so glad that you don't because like, it is not, I feel safe in my home with my, with my parents. They are the safest thing about Long Island to me and the beach, the beach is lit too. But I would also say that like recently there was this actress, Diamond Essence White, who spoke to a bunch of kids in a library at Smithtown High School, it, uh, virtually, I guess. And uh, the parents went on her Twitter and she was talking about like this, this book about like Snow White uh, doesn't, Snow White isn't white or Snow isn't white or something like that. Like there can be opportunities for princesses to be like people of color. Very like practical like story for young people to be able to see themselves in a great way. And these parents on this Zoom call were like, I'm on her Twitter, she's a cab. And during this call, while she and and like freaked out at this superintendent and the principal of Smithtown's like whole like ed education. And the principal apologized to the parents for her. That fundamentally is which the I and and I guess that's just the times we're living living in, because I'm like that is wild to me. That is so wild to me. They just don't want to live in a world where they're wrong. It's just or, a lot of fear. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a fear of the unknown. And, you know, like, it's even, I think my, my biggest fear with Big Sky was knowing like, okay, here I am playing this queer character who's going to be broadcast into the living rooms of a lot of like conservative households. And I was very terrified of the backlash of that, that like I personally would receive where I was, I truly was expecting people to like come after me and be like, get this faggot off the air. Like, ah, mm -hmm. like, or wh whatever they would say. Mm -hmm. Not that I truly give a shit. I think I've got <laughs> decently thick skin, um, yes. but it was the opposite. I actually had a surprisingly opposite reaction so far, at least. Um, well, that's the power of good television because the way your character is written, uh, Jerry, who is a uh, survivor of, of sex trafficking, which is sort of the premise of Big Skies, is getting these uh, s people who have been like kidnapped uh, by like truckers and, and uh, other parties uh, who are authorities, uh, getting them safe and getting them and, and trying to bring them home. And that's sort of the, the main action of it. So to see your character written with like such empathy and such care, and you're part of that like writing process in some capacities, right? I think, I think that has gotten a little misconstrued. <laughs> okay. I, I, it's, it's like you say one thing and then it becomes 10 articles and 10 other articles. I, you know, way back when in New Mexico, I had a conversation with the director who's also an EP uh, about like who I think the character is. And then they, they tweaked and twisted and kind of made Jerry more in line with a more honest representation of that person. And then along the way, there've been opportunities where, where something just didn't fit, seem, something didn't mesh right in the script for me. And, and I was like, Hey, I know I'm like a no name actor, uh, it, stepping over the line that I, I shouldn't be stepping, but like, can, uh, can we readdress this? And, and there have been multiple instances where they have tweaked things. Um, so I don't, I wouldn't say I have like creative control over any script in any way, shape or form. But, but you they, have agency they, over your character. I have agency over my character and they've been very, very generous with their time and uh, listening. To, to me about this character because, you know, I, I will say like Big Sky doesn't have like a trans consultant or anything like that. So when they're, uh, and they do 
I think they do a very good job of uh, making a well-rounded character. But you know, when, when there's times where I'm like, I think this could be, I think there's an area of opportunity to sharpen uh, this moment of representation. Many times they've listened. That's wonderful. And yeah. and they should, and you want to see that. You're seeing that like with, with Big Mouth, this animated show on Netflix. They uh, created a trans character this season and they didn't like just rely on the cis writers they had. They hired a trans writer to, to take care of it. And that's, at least that is the direction that this, that Hollywood seems to be moving in. I, I, I think it, is really important that we have people telling stories in every room, even if it's not the same person. It shouldn't be the same person because different people uh, with the same or similar identities should ha have totally different opinions. And it's so you should be able to hear all of them. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, uh, I would say the same thing about casting, you know, authenticity equals uh, a stronger product. Yeah, exactly. But I'm excited. I'm excited for you to see where Jerry's story goes. I I am too. I'm yeah. seeing like we're meeting like some of her friends too. That's literally all I've seen so far. But your ensemble and and, and you are all so strong on it together. It is it is literally just building blocks. I think my parents like even watched like one of the guest stars who was like that lawyer, and they were like, "Oh my god, she needs her own show." Karen Canoval. I hope I'm saying her name right. Good God, she's god's gift to acting she's so good she's yeah. so good she took she, she took that part and made it so funny and <laughs> yeah like snaps all around yeah and, and you want that too that's like a testament to like a laying out a career and all that i did want to ask you about a gateway because you went to gateway with miles and i know gateway had a huge impact on him gateway playhouse and uh like his his mentor that he met. So I'm curious what your experience was there. Uh, Gateway was incredible. You know, I, it was a, a big, a, a place of a lot of validation for me. Um, I, le I met my fiance through Gateway. Um, oh, you know, I, I think I grew up there in a lot of sense. Um, I really, I didn't take a lot of classes there, but I did do a lot of shows. Um, and they were like, working in a professional theater on working as a, as a kid in a professional theater, when you're like not a professional actor, you learn a lot. And, um, you know, it, it's really cool to see a lot of alumni from there have gone on to do some like really cool things. Is there like a, a, a path like for you, like wanting to do theater in the future and all that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I started in theater. I yeah. specifically started in musical theater. Um, you could not pay me to audition for a musical right now. I oh. truly like put me in front of a camera. I'm confident. I'm cool. I'm prepared. Make me sing on camera. Fine. Make me sing for a musical theater audition for whatever reason I suck. And it's just like <sighs> not something I, I, I have given myself enough training towards to like really excel in. However, I love plays. If someone oh, just like asked me to do a musical, I would love to. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love I I love theater. Uh, oh, yeah. I did I did a play in New Jersey like a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, oh, with John Carroll Lynch, who plays Ligarski, with his wife, not with John Carroll Lynch, but with his okay. wife. So wow. I met I met John like a year or two ago, and then when I saw that he booked Big Sky, I was like, Hey Brenda, oh my gosh, oh my god, tell John, tell John, congrats, and I'll see him on set. And then I actually booked it. It was cool. Um, yeah, I would love to do more more theater. I also wanted to ask you about um, auditioning because you have been like auditioning, I assume for like years professionally. And like a lot of people see where you are right now and they'll understand like, this isn't something I just like booked one time. This took like years and years. So what have you learned about auditioning and what have you told yourself what would what do you wish you could have told yourself when you were starting out? Oh my god, just one thing. I um <laughs> no. I, I mean, so I mean, starting from the beginning, I feel like I had a really strict and incorrect idea of what an actor needed to be, and that really held me back from my own self expression. Um, I think I 
forced myself into years of unnecessary suffering to fit this certain mold that I just didn't fit in hopes of being a successful actor. And it wasn't until I like chilled the fuck out and was just like, let myself be who I wanted to be that I started booking. Um, you know, I had like a bit of a mental breakdown, flew to California, dyed my hair purple and like changed my headshots. I was like, all right, this is my casting now deal with it. And it, it worked. I truly did not start. I was like night and day. All of a sudden I started getting auditions where I was like, Oh, I can resonate with this character. Oh my God. I can, I, I, this is what I wanted to do. Um, and then that, that gave me more confidence and that gave me more ownership of the auditions I was doing. So before when I said like pop me in front of a camera and I get really, uh, I'm confident, whatever, I'm excited. It, it, it is your audition. It is your space. So create the character you want, take the pauses you want, but like, mm -hmm sit in the chair backwards, who the fuck cares? Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, there, there are p many people will have all these different rules and what you can and cannot do in an audition. Fuck that. Do it. I don't know. Yeah. Learn from your mistakes. There was a weird period of time where, you know, I, I was in um, the Netflix film, Alex Strangelove and Word. everyone told me not to go to the audition how I wanted to. And that was in this full face of essentially drag makeup. Mm -hmm. um, of and I was like, I was like, mm, I'm going to do it. And, yes. you know, that's what booked me the job, like, it, you, you know, and I got hired to do my own makeup on it. And, whoa, and, and like, I made a lot of mistakes after that, where I was like, okay, I have to go to this audition with green eyes. Oh, no. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, it's like, okay, no, I, I shouldn't have done that. But it's like, and you learn, you, you find your rhythm. Yes. Um, yeah, you know, everyone, everyone always says, like, be who you are, like be yourself. That's the most, that's the most authentic thing you can bring. And I never really got that because I, they were saying that on one hand and in the other, we're saying you had to fit the mold and like to know what you're selling. Right. And there is truth to that, but I don't know. I really, I changed my casting like many times and got super, super specific so I was going out for very few roles, but those roles I was going out for were so perfect for me mm -hmm. that I was booking them. Yeah, that's, that's really how it works out. Like I see when I line up with a character and, and when you feel it in, in that audition. And also like a lot of people forget that like your self tapes are kind of like also, and maybe do you feel this way? Like you're directing a little bit too. You're like, kind of like creating the entire atmosphere and like creating like the character's journey in a way that like a director kind of has to and like you're you're presenting like what you will be doing with the work I don't know that's sort of something I've been experimenting with lately yeah it's it's your unique take on it and you know some some people aren't gonna like that okay right. it's not your role you know, and it's, exactly. it's hard when you have only a few opportunities coming your way. Like there, there's this desperation. I think a lot of actors harbor that's like, it's like, if I don't book this one, like I'm never going to get this opportunity again. It's like, no, you will. And you'll get one that you're better for. I wanted to be a series regular on a drama for the past, who knows how many years. And me thinking back to like some of my, I actually, I can remember one same casting director this big sky, Marcy Phillips, who is head of casting for ABC. Yes. The first time I went in for her, I was like, oh my God, like I am going to be booked. I'm going to be blessed. Like this is my role. Um, it was a terrible audition. At the time, I didn't think that, but looking back on it, I was one, I wasn't right for that part. Two, I wasn't prepared properly. Three, it was a bad audition. <laughs> of course I didn't book it. It is so cool to hear you say that because look at where you are. Look and you know what it and with this part i i've said it in in a few other interviews how i i was apprehensive at first to audition for this one and i think because i i had this gut feeling of i'm gonna book this and that made me scared when i actually was faced with the opportunity to do that it was scary and i'd be lying if i said doing this show wasn't scary as hell 
I, I was terrified of it, even though it's what I've always wanted. So why were you I, scared? Um, I was scared of I was scared of ridicule. I was scared of not being good. I was scared of not being taken care of. You know, playing playing a queer character on a not queer show is scary. Um, you know, I didn't want to. It's scary feeling like you're the only person in the room. Um, and especially when you're going to be thrust into millions of households, it's like, I don't know what to expect. This, I've never had an opportunity like that. So it was, it was nerve wracking. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this audition, I, I went to LA for pilot season and got only auditions in New York. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm homesick. I'm going home. Booked a flight. Then I got this audition for big sky the day after I got back to New York and I was like okay great I'll get to New York and I'll do that audition the next day um I was tentative about I, I was like uh, I'm not tentative you wrong use the word I was I, I was nervous about it and I uh my agent still convinced me to confirm it so I do the audition I did one take one time like I did one side one one time and Marcy Phillips was like that was perfect I have no notes I called my agent. I called my agent, and I had to sing a song at that at, at that audition you as well. Did I was curious if you did because I did. I sang. I sang sixteen bars of, of uh, Arizona by Miss White. Look her up. She's so good. I called my agent. I was like, I'm I'm gonna book this. I know it. And then so I had a callback uh, for one other side, and I only did it one time, and I got the same response. And I saw the other people in the waiting room, and I looked around, and I was like, Yeah, I booked it. Okay. Wow. And um, I, called, I called my reps again, and I was like, I am positive I booked this. And then a couple days later, they opened up a test deal, um, which uh, if, if anyone listening doesn't know, test deal, you would uh, you agree upon your, your salary before you audition again for like the studio and the network. Um, it's like a lot of high stress, a lot of, a lot of drama. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with that sort of deal, do you tell your agent like, I'll do anything for it? Or do you have a standard? Uh, I that. mean, it depends if you have a track record, if you've had test deals in the past, which I never had. Um, if you had series regular roles in the past, which I never had, um, that sets a precedent for you. So mm -hmm. if you're making a million dollars an episode, okay, there's your precedent. You know, I didn't have a precedent. So that's, you know, that's where you start. Yeah. Um, and they opened the test deal and then I didn't have to test. It was a direct offer. So I did one side, I did two sides each one time and then I was on set. Were any of the side scenes from the, the actual show or were they just like written for the audition? Uh, the, first, the first one was, the first side was the truck stop scene from the pilot. It was wow. slightly different version. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was so. It was really fun. Damn. I had I I I had so much anticipation to film that because that was that was the audition scene, and then we were, that was like the next scene I would be filming back in New Mexico, and then I didn't get to film it. So I had that scene in February, and then I didn't get to film it until <sighs> September. Um, so it was just like. Oh my! God. I was so excited. We were so prepared to do that one. I was, it was, it's near and dear to my heart. And you've talked about your your co star, who uh, I think his name is Brian. Brian uh, Garrity. Yeah, he's he's this incredible character. He plays this incredible character, this this Ronald, and uh, just seeing like your relationship and like the the work that you guys do on this show, it it seems so distant. But like when I watch you guys do it, it actually seems very very practical and very very close. So yeah, it's TV's weird. You know, you're not given the time to like in theater. You get to rehearse and form like. I, I, I don't know about you, but I've like people I've had to be romantic with in theater. I feel like I've like grown crushes on them and stuff. It's like, like, cause you're working so, so intimately together. Television is not like that. It's like, boom, 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 in, out, go. And it's like, if you have chemistry, good. And I think we got lucky that Brian and I actually have chemistry and he's a fantastic and generous actor. Yeah. Because when those later scenes come where, you are where it's clear to, to the other captors that he is he is this depiction of evil and maybe to you he is but but 
uh, Jerry takes that opportunity to be like, see, see me as I am. And like that, this is me moment that, that was like so defining uh, for, and, and so important because like I, we haven't even really said the verbiage yet, but you are the first series regular um, to uh, first uh, seri- non-binary actor to play a series regular on primetime television, which is a, crazy- a mouthful. It is. It is. Um, and I sort of had this thing uh, when El Morgan Lee came on because she's like, I'm the first trans actress to be uh, part of a, a play that's nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. And I'm like, and I'm like, how does that feel? And she's like, how does it feel? It just is. It shouldn't be. <laughs> but like, it- that, that's kind of how I feel too. It's yeah. like, I, I kind of, and I don't mean this in a way that I'm going to sound um, like ungrateful or, or something to, to, to a lot of people, but it's, I cringe a little when the idea of like first this, first that, first this comes up because it's like, great, seeing, having any amount of queer visibility is important and good, but I feel like harboring on firsts detracts from the work that still needs to be done. It's like, Absolutely. you can throw someone in a project, call them the first something, and it could be some terrible representation. It's like, is big, is my role in Big Sky perfect? No, and I, I do, I won't fight anyone who wants to fight me on it. Um, I'm proud of, I'm proud of the role. I'm proud of my job on the role. I'm proud of the work I've done. Um, but I don't want people to like give themselves a pat on the back or, or think there isn't more that needs to be done just for letting me in the room. So then what and, do you think the biggest issues are for the non-binary and trans community right now? It could be in the, in our industry and outside of it, but what do, what do you think they are? I mean, in the real world, violence, death, um, legislation, you know, you, you've got policies in, in government being proposed left and right, thankfully not in the Biden administration, thankfully being reversed in this administration. But you've got policies being proposed that limit access to bathrooms, to housing, to employment, to um, uh, health care, to being in the military, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anti-discrimination, like there are there are so many hoops that queer, gender nonconforming, trans, gay, et cetera, people need to jump through just to exist on a level playing field because the playing field is not level. And so I'm happy to be included at a seat at the table being on Big Sky, but I don't want people to harbor on like first this, first that because goddamn, there is a lot more work to be done. And I'm grateful that Jerry... Kennedy is a lot of people's first introduction to a queer, trans, non-binary, I mean, a a poor trans sex worker from Montana who works at truck stops, who's an aspiring musician and gets kidnapped and has like a weird almost romance with her captor. That is a rich, meaty character. And, you know, you, you see her, her goals and her hopes and her dreams the first time you meet her in the diner. And it's like, you don't know her trans status. You don't know her occupation. Um, You see her with her friends. You know, she has a support group. She's got people who love her, even though you find out her family didn't. Or if they did, they they kicked her out. And it's like, I think this hits so many marks for people who need to meet a character like Jerry. And if if anything comes from this, I hope that people who previously viewed the queer people in their life with judgment and ridicule will take a second look and look at them with empathy because it's like Lizzo has a a famous quote that's like, um, if you can love me, you can love yourself. And that's how I feel with Jerry. It's like, if you can love Jerry, you can love the trans people in your real life. You can love that your, your queer child who you don't know how to help. And yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that was no. <laughs> I get heated I'm, about it. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad you are. It's 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 beautiful to to hear you talk like this too because you're right that so many of the problems are also outside of legislation and has to do with like human decency and just common sense. And there's there's people who like I found this dude recently. 
uh, named Jordan Peterson, who's like a professor who like has stirred a lot of shit about like disagreeing with like a government mandate to like address non-binary people and anybody by their respective pronouns that they prefer. And he conflates that with, you know, fears of fears of like totalitarianism and fascism. And it's like, no, man, it's just like, you know, it's also just like, don't be an asshole and just respect people. Like exactly. And, and I think by conflating it with like a fear is like that, that's sort of how, and, and not painting like all like Hispanic people with, with this notion, but a lot of like Trump supporters who are Latino, like have that fear of of like communism and and he warns of like do you want another like fidel castro and shit like that yeah fear mongering and, it's a, a very powerful tool yeah and 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 good like in in a micro sense too when you really want to like like push your agenda and very very dangerous thinking about um pronouns too it's like there was a scene in big sky that ultimately never made the final cut where Jerry talks about pronouns for a moment. Mm -hmm. And in the original writing, it said something like, um, but I prefer she, her. And I, and I had a conversation with one of the executive producers and it's like, I know the intention with that is really good, but I don't, the use of like preferred pronouns or like I prefer this makes it sound preferential. That's like excusable to say something else where it's like, if I misgendered, I don't know, Obama, or if I misgendered, um, I don't know why Obama is the first person that came to mind. If I misgendered Melania Trump, you know, it's like right. people would like give me a second look, but if you misgender a trans person, it's like, well, but did you know? It's like, as like, it's almost excusable to dehumanize trans people, to, to reduce them to a single body part, which, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's frustrating because there's also the notion that like people make about being non-binary that that is exclusively the gender identity as well. And people don't really have the verbiage or the education to to respect people's intersectionalities and queerness yet. So I, I would love for you to talk about yours. Cause I, I mean, so. for, for me, listen, I'd be the first person to tell you like, I hate a label. I'm just going to do what I want. It's like, what's, what's my sexuality? I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess pansexual, like what's your gender identity? I don't know. I guess like I'm just doing what I want. For me, I find freedom in non-binary because it's like, all right, there's no rules. It's like, do I also identify as trans? Yes. Does that make me non-binary trans feminine? Yeah. Does that make Jerry that? Not inherently, but I like decided she was. Oh, okay. um, like, uh, you know, it's like there was a, a, a draft for one point where she did say she identified as non-binary, but also a girl and that also didn't, didn't make the final cut. But um, like I said, I find freedom in non-binary. It feels limitless. It feels non-restrictive. Um, and, and do I inhabit uh, some semblance of androgyny? Often, yes, yes, I do. And I think people often think like, oh, to be non-binary, you have to be androgynous. You have to be this, you have to be that. I've had some people say like, oh, wait, wait until, wait until the libs find out that Jesse James Keitel isn't trans, uh, they're, they're non-binary. And it's like, okay, well, like India Moore is also non-binary and is also trans. You know, it's like, th there are, like, do your thing. Who the fuck cares? Exactly. Like, I, it's, I, people are either... I find, I don't know how to say this. To, for me, I think these labels for Jesse are for straight cis people. Right. Who are like, who more often than not are the ones who need to know. Where, you know, it's like, what, what, are, what are my pronouns? She, they. What are like, what pronouns do I identify most with? Gay, she. You know, like, oh, there she goes. Like, like, oh, who does she think she is? You know, like, I, it's just like, 
There is certainly a security in knowing security. that you don't have to define yourself to the people that don't worry about defining themselves to you. And like people can change their minds all the fucking time because that is literally what people do constantly yeah. on a people, daily people basis. People grow and evolve and it's like, yes. okay, so now, now throw yourself into something super gendered like Hollywood. I, I did a film called Miller and Son that got a good amount of award recognition. And at one point we won a student Academy award. And with that, we were shortlisted for an Oscar. And when going to the Academy, you needed to say for your entire cast, you need to put um, actor or actress and actor is like a gender neutral term. Right. So when, so the director came up to me and was like, what do you want me to put? And in that moment I was like, I mean, this is stupid. I was like, okay, but am I more of a Brad or an Angelina? <laughs> and, and I was like, okay, well, the answer is very clear to me. Obviously, I'm an Angelina. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, actress. And, you know, e even like IMDb is super gendered. They have when like a project, the character names aren't listed, it resorts to actor or actress. Right. And it's like, why? Yeah, That's, it's it interesting. So it's, you know, even even the SAG Awards, best female actress, best male actor, like it, it, it is existing on like my having like my life, my existence be so binary yet so not mm -hmm. being so in my head, very not binary, but needing to exist in a binary system. It's fucking weird. It is strange, and it, it always, and on some terms, it does feel like a double standard because we're also both like white in the queer space too, and yep. like that that opens up a whole other conversation about like where our privilege stands in terms of like telling stories and taking in stories and like applauding progress. You know, so many people like applaud pride and like for me like i my first like pride experience is like walking down fifth avenue like with like all fucking whatever in front of sasha velour with my little off-broadway fucking show and for me i was like this i finally feel like i'm a part of something and then when like i grow a little bit and like i actually hear and understand like what the privilege of walking down fifth avenue actually comes from and like who actually like fought for me to be there and the 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 notion of like the black trans identity upholding so much of the freedoms that like white people <laughs> celebrate uh, yeah. queerness. but today it it's it we, we sometimes just forget like where we came where we came from and who who gave us the privilege to be there yeah totally yeah, <laughs> it's no one hundred percent. It's a mouthful, and and I guess like you know I've I freak out at times about Ryan Murphy in the same way that like a strange loop freaks out about Tyler Perry, and it's like where where do we get the privilege to like walk away and let or, and give people agency to tell the stories they tell, like set up the field and then like give up time, and it's something it's something that like I've been wrestling with as somebody who has no power in this industry, by the way, I may tell you. Like, I, I mean, really same, like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird being, it's weird being alive in 2021. Like it's, <laughs> I'm excited to see strides in diversity attempted to be made. Um, I would like, you know, like even Michaela Cole with the, the Golden Globes a couple days ago, it's like, it's furious. Fuck doesn't and, make sense to me and lovecraft country to all of those actors i don't know if you saw that show i haven't no. seen that yeah you'll lose your fucking mind <laughs> when you watch it it's it, they take like two different genres and uh it's it isn't a conflation it is it is like you realize they can be so intrinsically linked and it opens up like sci-fi in a way that i never found sci-fi palatable before until oh, I, I love Lovecraft life, Country. Right? So then you're gonna lose you're gonna lose your shit and you're gonna be furious <laughs> after you watch it and be wow. like, why didn't Journey Smollett or Jonathan Majors or Wunmi Masaki or Anjane L why didn't these people get the nominations they deserve? And my you know, on on I May Destroy You, 
I was bugging out about it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, not wrong there. Y'all got to watch Big Sky on ABC. And oh my God, I didn't even get to it. You're writing a novel, right? Doing a lot of things. Okay. Um, <laughs> this, this is the bonus segment. Um, yes. So I am a newly represented writer. Um, you know, I'm first and foremost working on selling a TV show. Um, the mm -hmm. one that's at the top of the list right now is a sci-fi for me to also star in. Oh my God. Um, it's about uh, an, an android who becomes uh, the primary suspect in a high profile murder case. Oh and God. it's um, very fun. I love oh writing. Um, yeah. But I also, uh, a couple of years ago, I started writing a novel. And so I have a fully drafted, almost 200 page novel uh, that is a middle grade children's book uh, about a girl who runs for class president um, and is stopped by the PTA because she's trans. Um, but that, I started writing that in 2015. Um, wow. Unbelievable. Well, we'll see if I ever get around to doing another draft. It's daunting. And I'm I got sure. some other stuff in the works as well. So you'll yes. have to come back here once you sell that show because like I have Jan Janelle Monet even and, and like all the, the queer Android sort of uprising uh, of, of these, those incredible stories that, that like really excites me. And uh, I love seeing that being tinkered, like even like David Bowie too is like a big part of like that identity. But um, for now, uh, that, that's all we got. So thank you so much, Jesse. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.